I'd like to begin. And uh, what I, I have is I'm going to show you a few different slides here. And then I want to um, spend some time actually showing you how you can have some fun. And uh, this is one of the reasons why sometimes I go for long periods of time without seeing my wife, because I just get too caught up uh, in my little dark room here. So, <laughs> all right, uh, let's move forward here, hopefully. So the dark room, uh, you may have heard uh, the computer and Photoshop referred to as the digital dark room uh, because it allows for you as a photographer to do um, many different things to your original photographs. Maybe you didn't get it just right when you did that capture um, and there are certain things you can do to improve it. I'm, I am old school. I used to use a dark room. That's not me, but that could have been uh, with a cheaper um, uh, and larger taking black and white negatives and putting them in the enlarger and and you know timing it so that you then take this white piece of paper and put it into a developer and then a stop bath and a fix and it, it, you know you never really knew what you were going to get. Um, I'm glad we are not in that space any longer, in part because of all the chemicals I flushed down the drain. So in any event, digital darkroom uh, with your computer allows you to do so, so much. And again, I'm not an expert in it, um, but I just want to share a few things. I'm actually quite certain that there are many people here on the meeting tonight who could put me to shame. Uh, I know you could write a book with what I don't know, but I'll share what I do. So uh, this is one thing you can do. It's probably uh, four steps from a picture, and I'll be demonstrating all these uh, to you. This is something that Steve Barnes, uh, a member of the Guild, showed me a while ago. And uh, warning, it can get addictive as you start playing around um, if, if you like things that may be a little bit more abstract, et cetera. So you can create orbs and we'll show you that. Um, there are ways you can use filters to create special effects. And there are a number of filters, which some of which I'll show you later. A filter is basically an overlay on top of your original image that will either block or add certain things to create some really wild um, or subtle differences. And so I can't remember which one I used here, but this was a little more reminiscent if you're familiar with the uh, Japanese woodblock artist uh, Hiroshige, the colors I thought. Um, so Hiroshige visits Portugal in that shot. So we'll, we'll look a little bit at some of the filters that are available to you. Um, when this uh, evening's presentation was shared by Ginny. You had a picture of a gorgeous landscape, but the sky was, it was nice, but she added a new one. Uh, and you can do the same thing with just a click. So uh, these were two fledgling osprey uh, just near my house here uh, in Vermont. I'm a snowbird. And I used one of the new Photoshop features to just pop in a different uh, background. It may be too busy, but you get the idea. Simply changing a color print to black and white can be very nice. It can have a, a dramatic tone. Um, I think it's harder to take a good black and white photograph uh, because you really are relying on the content and the composition of it. Uh, and you don't have that pop of colors which can sometimes amaze you. And sometimes you can also tone an overall photograph as well, uh, if you'd like to do that. So we'll, we'll see how to do that. Vignettes, well, what's a vignette? I'm, I'm not talking about a little story. I'm talking about uh, a circular area around the outside of your photograph, which you can either darken or lighten to uh, bring more attention. So. Um, that alligator, Ginny may re recall, we met that alligator during a CPG trip um, in the Okefenokee, and the picture was fine, but uh, 
the background started competing too much. And so I slightly darkened it a bit uh, using a, a vignette. And the same with this raccoon uh, on Jekyll Island. Um, I tried to darken the edges a little bit. There are a couple of ways you can do that, but it's one way to um, help focus your, the viewer's attention because our eye is typically attracted to light and bright. Handling distracting backgrounds. Boy, how many times have you taken a photograph and you go, oh, I wish that wasn't there. I wish that could move or I, you know, I didn't notice it. I was in such a hurry. The other day, uh, my wife and our friend and uh, our dog were walking down the road. I took this picture with a few little uh, tricks or tools, I'll say. Uh, I did this. I got rid of the leash, which was too distracting. The telephone line, the pole, et cetera, makes it look more naturalistic. I know what you're thinking, but isn't that cheating? Hold on to that thought. You can also crop your photograph. So I tend to take a photograph um, that's larger than what I might want to eventually have. And then I crop or cut away parts of it that uh, don't necessarily fit in or take away from it. There's also a tool you can use to actually increase your real estate, uh, like of that can of flour. Uh, in our front yard here, and I'll show you how to do that as well. And then the last one I'll show you, this is more than five, I know, I wasn't very good in math, um, but you can actually create age differences. So this was taken, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago when I was just beginning to turn salt and pepper. And you know, uh, if, if you had seen me in my youth, you know, my hair would have been a lot darker and I would have you know, looked a little different, um, but I don't know. I'm not too thrilled about what I may look like in the years that come ahead. There's a very simple tool you can play with. It's not perfect, but it's fun. So, um, so those are the things that we'll show tonight. And, uh, you know, you may wonder, well, what tricks are up your sleeve? You've got uh, a lot of different things available to you. You know, and the word tricks, you know, if I'm intentionally trying to fool somebody and would never want to reveal my secrets, um, you know, that might be a trick. And when Photoshop first came out, people were very uh, critical of the capabilities of this powerful uh, software. Uh, and many of the things that you can do in Photoshop, you can't do necessarily in uh, Lightroom, um, but the, you know, that's why I like Photoshop. I have more at my disposal. So I tend to think of these as tools. There are different tools that can be used to uh, improve my photographs and the techniques. So a technique is how you apply the tool. And quite often the technique that you apply, you're going to apply because you have a picture in your head that you wanna create. And so you might want to play around with that original image. The bottom line being really tap into your creativity and really clean up some of the photographs you have there. Um, I know this is fuzzy on your computer, apologies, but when you steal from the internet, you don't always know what you get. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Ansel Adams' very famous uh, photograph, Moonrise, over. Hernandez, New Mexico. And the one that you see is the black one. That's the one, and boy, it's a stunning picture. I've seen it before in real life. It's magnificent. But when he stopped, literally slammed on the brakes by the side of the road, pulled out his large format camera and set it up uh, with the help of his family, that's what his image looked like. So he you know, didn't just take these fabulous photographs right, uh, right away. Um, he had a great eye, but he would dodge and burn or do other things. So this is actually um, his notes. These are his notes as to how he would darken areas through what we call dodging and burning. If you burn something, it makes it more uh, darker. If you dodge it, you 
let less light through, it'll be lighter. And he had this whole scenario for how he was going to go about doing it. So if you feel guilty about using Photoshop too much, you can overdo it for sure, um, but it's okay. It's, you know, we have the tools, we might as well use it. And then um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but what I would say um, for the assignment for next, uh, next meeting in your digital darkroom, uh, create something new using, you know, take a picture, standard image as your foundation and play around with it. Go wild, um, you know, have fun. And, you know, you can try some of these or you may have other ideas as well. And um, the picture below, I'm actually not going to show you that technique. I can show you some other time. Um, or if we have lots of time, maybe I could pull it off. Um, you know, I just put two different images together of this hawk in the, um, the desert of the Baja uh, and uh, a photographer taking a selfie on top of Mount Mansfield here in uh, Vermont. So anyway, just keep that in mind as to your, uh, your creative fun. At this point, before I start moving into the uh, techniques, and uh, they'll be relatively quick demonstrations. So uh, you may want to have a pencil and paper handy, um, but certainly you can get in touch with me uh, via email, and I'm happy to explain things further if you would like. Um, so let me stop. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for the uh, the welfare of the group, uh, please unmute yourself and have at it. Jim, I have one question about the how Ansel Adams was able to dodge and burn. All I, I've never been in a dark room, done you know, done any kind of dark room work. Was that done using different chemicals to get that that effect? No, I believe the way uh, traditional dodging and burning, you would have a sheet of paper uh, that would have a hole in it. You know, use your imagination, okay? And uh, and so you would put that sheet of paper between the paper that's laying flat and uh, from the projector part of the enlarger that's that's shining the uh, projected image down. And so you would move it around and the more light that would get through that hole, the darker it would be. If, uh, similarly, if, if you wanna dodge it, you, you just block the areas. Okay, thank you. And it's the same thing as the dodge and burn on Photoshop. Um, yeah, I'm very familiar with that. I was yeah. just curious how it was done in the dark room. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? I think Eva, if you're trying to say something to me, you're on mute uh, and you can unmute yourself by going to the lower left corner where your microphone is and just click on it. Okay, hello. I just want to say really quick, uh, introduce myself because it's the first time I am uh, coming to the meeting with you guys. And I just arrived to the, to the club, I will say. And uh, so uh, I am Eva Castro and uh, I am just... Uh, Sherry, help me. I'm sorry, I'm French. And uh, I have a hard time to speak sometimes, so... Um, how do you say when you're, I'm not a professional, I am, I am just a, what? Amateur, yes. We so, all are. All right. We all are. All right, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Hi, Eva, I, I actually saw your bio today and the, uh, the images that you sent and you, you know what you're doing. You, you have some spectacular images in there, so. Thank you so much. It's really nice to hear that. I, I am trying to do my best. I mean, I'm learning everywhere I can and it's hard because not to do a wrong thing, but nobody is there to tell you to not to do something. So I follow my instinct and try to do the best and it's hard, so well, we thank welcome you. you. We welcome you and, and reach out um, even between meetings if you have any questions or- um, All right. Uh, thank you, Jenny. thank sure you. Thing. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. All right. I'm, <clears throat> if you will bear with me, I'm going to try to uh, 
Get back to where I need to be. Right. Oh boy. Right. Patience, my friends. Mm. Da, da, da. Are you able to see photographs of flowers? Great. Okay. So the first thing that I want to demonstrate is, um, well, first, let me show you. This is the Photoshop screen, eventually, where we will have the various uh, uh, tool categories available, the menu. And a lot of what I am going to go into will be under image and some of the pieces here, uh, some of the different tools under image. Um, and I will also use a little bit of filter and a few other things. Um, what we have on this are the different tool panels that are available. So let me just show you one, which this, this one right here, this is the dodge and burn. And if you forget, just hold your cursor over it and it will tell you what it is. This same square, the same tile would allow me to not just uh, burn, but I could also dodge. So I would hold it over that uh, tile. I would right click with my mouse and it would give me different options. So if I wanted to change it from the burn tool, which is highlighted to the dodge tool, I click that and it changes the tool. If I want to go back again, just right click my mouse on that tile and go back to burn. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you know, if you have nothing better to do with your free time, play around with these. Um, so let me show you what I'm going to do to create an orb. Although I think I saw a question come up. Is that right? Um, if you have a question, unmute yourself and yes. then. I'm sorry. So my question will be the, the dodge and the burn in which uh, particular uh, situation are you going to use it? If I have something, I, I actually will demonstrate that uh, in a few of the photos. Right. So hold okay. on. Uh, uh, great question. So, but what I want to show you this time is how to create those weird, wacky globes those orbs, this is what you do. The first thing you have to do is you have to crop your picture to make it a square. So I'm going up to the tool here. If you see, hopefully you can follow my cursor to the little square there. I'm going to click on that and you'll see that it, it outlines the entire outside. If I grab onto a side, I can pull in and make it smaller, et cetera. Or I could grab a corner and pull it in, move it all around, et cetera, like that. And that way I could do anything I want in terms of uh, resizing it or getting rid of things. What I wanna do is up here, this is, um, this is the panel that tells me the different features I can use with the crop tool. So, if I want to crop this into a square, I click on ratio. Oh, look at all those. I can make a five by seven. I could make a, I'm going to do a square. And it brings in the uh, borders. And to move it, I simply put my cursor with that black arrow in the middle. I can put it anywhere, hold down my left key on the mouse and I can slide it to where I want it. I'm gonna just pretend right here. I now have a square highlighted. I go up above here to the top of the screen where there's the check mark, click, I've got my square. So step one, make, a, make your square. Second step, you're gonna to go to the filter. You're gonna slide down from filter to distort 
And if this goes too fast, this is being recorded, so you can watch it later as well, I guess. Uh, but I go to distort, I slide over to additional menu things here, and I see polar coordinates. I'm going to click at the bottom here where it says polar to rectangular and say, okay. Well, that's not exactly an orb. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the image. I'm going to rotate my image 180 degrees. I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm going to go back up to the filter tool back down to distort, polar coordinates, and now I'm gonna click the rectangular to polar. And let's see what happens. Voila. Now, this may be weird for some people and you may not like it. That's fine. I'm just showing you a tool that if you wanna play around, but this, this, you can start going crazy with this. So let me um, uh, tell you what, yikes, I have to move something here. Let me get rid of this. If I wanted to save it, by the way, just click that and I've got it. So again, it's, it's, uh, I got the square, I went to filter, distort, polar coordinates, and then the polar to rectangular, up to the um, uh, image, which I rotated 180 degrees, went back to the polar coordinates in the filters panel and did it that way. So uh, let me show you something else though, in terms of filters. I wanna get rid of this square here. How do I do that? Well, number one, if I go to my panel and just take my magnifying glass and click on that, it just brings me back to the full, uh, full image. If I wanted to create some different effects uh, by using what would be called layers, where it, the computer will layer something on top of this image, um, and I, again, there are certain do's and don'ts, but I'm just gonna show you ways you can have fun with this. Go up to filter, click down until you see filter gallery. And if you click on filter gallery, it will bring up this panel here, which allows you to use all these different toys, basically. You know, I don't like that whole enlarged screen, so I have to go down to the lower left-hand corner where it says 100%. I click on the little down arrow, I'm gonna fit this in view. Now I have the full view. So if you click on each one of these arrows, it will bring out a set of different options for your filter. So if I click on colored pencil, it's subtle. I don't like it. Maybe I wanna try cutout. So I slide over. No, I don't like that either. You may, but I don't. What about dry brush? That's usually one of my favorites. Am I noticing much of a difference? Not much. But maybe I want to try things like paint daubs, poster edges. Hmm, a little dark. I can actually play around with that some. Moving these sliders. They will change the intensity of, of uh, different pieces. And maybe we'll look at underpainting here just as one. So what you can see is, and it's magic, uh, is that all of these different filters are laid upon. Crosshatch, watch what happens here carefully. If I was to zoom in, way in, this plus sign I can use, zoom in again. You can begin to see little cross hatches that are put on. It adds a texture to the uh, image. And depending upon how, um, how large you want to display it, 
you may like it or you may not. You can try dark strokes. I don't care for that usually, too dark, but maybe I like ink outlines, spatter. Uh, you can play around with all of these. I'll just take you to the sketch, which is the black and white. And by the way, if you wanna collapse any of these, just click on the little delta triangle there. What would this look like in um, say graphic pen, anything? Well, it's different. Torn edges, I don't even know what that does. Yeah, what about a stamp? All right, so I don't have to go through all these. You get the idea, I think, uh, but it's really quite fun to play with these different filters. I have no idea who would ever want to do something like that unless they were doing macrame or something. I don't know. So let me cancel out of this and um, get rid of that. But th this is using the filter um, on this. And uh, well, here's a shot that, that was taken in the marsh uh, behind my house on St. Simon's one day. Again, you know, I can go to the filter filter gallery. And again, oh, I have to get this down, move my cursor down the lower left, get it to fit in the screen, fit on view. And then play around to see if there are any of these that I like. You know, maybe a black and white, ew, I guess not. Uh, half tone pattern. Yeah. No. Crosshatch. All right. So let me just stop there and um, say that you have these abilities. You know, if you're submitting it into a contest of some type and you're using a filter like that, read the rules for the contest though to find out um, how you could present it. Some contests will say you, you have to be very limited with the type of adjustments you make. Others say, well, you just have to identify it as a photo illustration or, or some other designation, which lets people know that you've uh, monkeyed around with it. So, Okefenokee Swamp again. Uh, I like taking silhouettes. I love silhouettes. It, it leaves a lot to my imagination. And so this actually is still in color, but it looks like it's black and white and it was taken on an overcast day. How do you replace the sky? This is so easy. You have your, uh, your image up on the screen. You go up to edit, the edit menu here in your upper right, click on it, has the drop down bar, and you go down, 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 down till you find sky replacement. Oh, that's easy. Click on sky replacement and you will get a panel with different skies. Uh, if I wanna change my sky, uh, I'll just click on the sky um, photo here and it has a dropdown of all these different skies. So if I wanted to pop in a different sky, you know, this one's pretty subtle. I'll try this. Yeah, okay. Sunset or sunrise. But you can see, you know, it, this just opens up the world to you. Now, if you did something like this, you would have to confess that you this is not an original work uh, because you did not take the sky. However, you can add, add your own sky. If you take photographs of clouds, sunsets, etc., you can actually go down here to the menu, and you would be able to add from your um, uh, gallery of some, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know where I have skies. You could probably put anything you want in the back. Um, you know, I'm under pressure. Right, here's one of the sky that is unretouched, but let's just see if this will allow a raw file to be shown. Yeah, it does. So I could use that. So you can add your own skies. You can also uh, make it brighter. 
And by the way, whenever you're making changes to your photographs, <coughs> excuse me, I suggest using a velvet hammer rather than just smashing it. So if you're using a slider, you know, you can slide it all the way to one side or another um, to, to see. Well, actually, yeah, that's kind of nice. Uh, <laughs> um, but play around with it with many things like sharpening or color adjustments. Things can look too crispy, crunchy, or the colors can look too unsaturated. So, all right. So um, that's how you do sky replacement. I'm going to cancel that, go back to my original. Again, go to edit, sky replacement, and click on whatever you want. All right, cancel. You, many of you have probably been to Gascoigne Park uh, on St. Simons. You know, you look up, it's, it's magnificent. The live oaks there are incredible. I actually think this would look better as a black and white. There are several different ways to do a black and white. I can desaturate this whole image. If I go up to adjustments and look for saturation, saturate and and I'm going to take my slider over just turn it into a black and white there's that way that's a very simple way but the simplest way to do this have your image go up to image adjustments slide over tell me when to stop okay you're muted but I heard you okay good I'm gonna click on black and white. This is fantastic because anything, I can still manipulate the colors that were there into being darker or lighter. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, if there's any red in this photograph, I can take this red slider and slide it to the left to make it darker, to the right to make it lighter. You can tell because the bar has light. Well, there's not a lot of red in there. What about yellows? Ooh, there's a lot of yellow in there. Maybe I like it up in here. Green, there should be a fair amount of green in there. Can you see the uh, resurrection ferns that are on the branches, how they change? It's pretty subtle. And with cyan, this is only going to change the darkness and lightness, the whiteness and blackness of anything that's cyan. And there's really not much in there. Maybe there's some blue sky in the background. Very, very little. The other thing I could have done is to just hit auto. See over here where it says auto, click on that and let, um, let Photoshop do its thing. But a lot of times when you click auto, I always do auto first just to see what it's going to look like. If I don't like it, then I cancel it. Um, but I can always take an auto and then I can make changes as well to it. And when I get it to where I like it, I would say, OK. And I now have a black and white uh, image there. So very simple uh, way, again, go to image, adjust black and white. Uh, those of you who know me, I like underwater photography. Uh, this is nice in color, but what would it look like in black and white? Because some people think, oh, they're so ominous, these sharks. They're, they're kind of nice, I like them, but I'm gonna go back to that black and white. Ooh. Well, that didn't do what I wanted on the water, did it? So let me play around a little bit. I know that the water background here is pretty much going to be cyan or blue. So let me just slide. I can turn this into a, maybe a nighttime picture. Well, that's not so good. Or I could lighten it up. See, if I go too far, it's not good, but Sometimes I can go a little bit and it get, got rid of that splotchiness. What about the blues? Again, I could create a nighttime. 
And you, as you notice, it's really not doing very much to the shark or the um, itself. So if I wanted to get it, again, I can always just hit auto. But I don't like auto, as you can see. It's too splotchy, so raise that up a little bit. And by the way, you know, after I save this, I'm done, I can go back, do my adjustments to my levels, levels and um, curves, allow you to control the, uh, the light and the dark parts. Levels is, is kind of a simpler way. So if I move my slider, this, if you're familiar with the histogram, this will. This is the black side. This is the white side. You don't want your histogram, this representation, going too far off to the side. But I can move the endpoints here toward where it's touching the histogram. See that? So, so you get it to where you might like it. If I wanted the whites wider, I'd slide that into here. Again, you see, it gives you a lot of control for how you might want to finesse your final photos. And this is using the levels tool. Um, at the risk of losing people partway through, I'm going to go really quickly now uh, through some of these. And um, uh, if you have questions, we can certainly go back to any of them. So. People are, are great subjects. Um, you know, I like this, but I wonder what would this look like in a black and white? So again, very simply, black and white, not bad. I know if I use these sliders, again, I may be able to change certain things for more dramatic features. Again, I don't want to overdo anything or I can click auto and see what they tell me they like. Okay, uh, we'll cancel that. By the way, get your pet pictures in to, uh, in, in November, there's gonna be a display. I think Ginny can announce this at the end. Um, there'll be a, a hanging at, I think it's Horton Gallery. Uh, this is my pooch. I took it uh, the other day. It was his third birthday. And, um, you know, he's got a beautiful face. Yes, I know you all agree. But that whiteness at the, you know, his, his chest, his feet, it just draws my eyes down because, again, eyes often go to the, uh, the lighter portions. So what I want to do is I want to darken those areas. There's a couple of ways I can do that. One is to go back over here to my tool panel to my burn tool, click on that. I have a circle size. I can make the, the size of that brush larger, smaller by going up to my panel here, the tool panel. And maybe I wanna increase it a lot larger up here. Well, that's quite a bit. And for demonstration purposes, that's fine. And so what I can do once I've got that, I can just, hold down my uh, left uh, mouse key and rub it over him. And you see it's darkening, darkening it very slightly. I want it to be slight. If I wanted to do this very quickly, I go up to the tool panel here. I usually like an exposure of five, but let's just say I had it at 50%. What would happen then? You start seeing some of the shadows here, uh, mid-tones, the medium parts being changed. If I wanted just the white parts to be changed, I click on highlights and that will get washed out. Let me undo. Anything you want to undo, you just have to um, go up here and do undo, or you can hold down your control or command on a Mac and uh, do Z, oops, um, and it keeps taking you back, back, back to your original. I wanna show you a different way to do a vignette though. Uh, that, that was some of the dodging of uh, the burning that I did, but I can go up to filter, 
camera raw filter. This is gonna bring up another panel and I hope you can all see it because I can't see you. If you can't see it, um, somebody speak up. All right. I think we're yes, seeing it, Jim. You, can you see it? Yes. Okay, great. So here, um, those of you who are familiar with Lightroom may recognize these panels and tools and that's a separate um, workshop to go through all those. But it's basically, you know, you can adjust things like the highlights, you can bring them down, make them a little darker. Look here at his chest. All right. Uh, if I wanted to bring the, make the shadows darker or lighter, I can move that slider to where I like it. But if I want to create a vignette around this, I scroll down or to where it says effects. Under effects, there is vignetting. And I can slide it to the right to make it look like I don't want it to look, <laughs> but I could do that. Uh, you know, baby pictures seem to like this, but I could move it to the left to darken it. And you can see it, it may wash out his feet a little bit, his paws, uh, but it does draw my eye much more onto uh, the, the face there. And so I can either say okay or cancel. I'm gonna say okay, boom. I created a vignette and that's a nice way to do it. Um, there is another way you can create a vignette using that same camera raw filter in Photoshop. If I go up to the filter button, go down to camera raw filter. Again, it will bring up that panel. And what I can do is I can selectively work on an area. Um, and I might do that by going here and there's a radial filter. Let me try this. This is where I'm going to draw uh, a little bit here. I want to move this though. Uh, drag it by pulling on that. And with that, I can change the brightness, just, just what's inside, just what's inside uh, of that. Or if I wanted to darken the outside of that, I go up and I click on the invert, which will give me the outside. And this just darkens the outside. So you can uh, make your, vignettes as selective as you want. I'm probably making this more confusing than it needs to be. Um, there are other ways you can um, do these types of things, including the simple dodge and burn. Uh, all right, uh, I'm moving on here. Sorry. How do you get rid of this? There are a couple of tools that are indispensable, though not always perfect. Let me make this a little larger. How do I get rid of that leash? Oh, there must be some way. Well, if you go up to the tool panel and you see this, it looks almost like an eraser, but it says it's a spot healing brush. I'm gonna right click just so you can see there's a healing brush tool and a spot healing brush tool uh, and a couple of others. I'm going to use that spot healing brush tool. And I just want to take care of that small leash, but look at the size of my brush. It's way too large. I have to adjust the size of my brush. Eh, even that's too large, so I'll make it smaller still. That's pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is with the Bot healing brush, I'm going to take and I'm just going to run it along whatever I don't want and see if it will do its magic. Oh my goodness gracious, where did that go? 
It's not perfect if you look at the uh, pause here, but play around with it more. What about that telephone pole? What if we get rid of that? Whew, great. The, the brains of Photoshop put, well, they're amazing. <laughs> you know, they can just, uh, through those algorithms, they can just make things happen. So these are ways that you can um, remove some unwanted objects. Again, you may want to uh, identify that you're doing that if you were in a contest or not. But, um, and so that's one way. There are a couple of other things that can be used. Uh, one is, you see these three bars here? Um, there's something called a patch tool, which you can add to your toolbar. Any of these tools uh, you are able to add in. What I want to do here is, let's say um, I didn't want my dog in here. I'm going to take and I'm going to hold my uh, mouse down and run it around the mouse. I've selected an area here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down again. I'm going to click on my mouse, left click, hold it on that, and I'm going to move it to some other part of the uh, photo and just see, well, that's not a perfect match. I mean, you have to play with it a little bit. I'm going to hold it to where I think I want it. And I'm going to let go. And there goes my dog. He can return, but so that is called um, the patch tool and it's very good for large areas. One other way of creating something is a clone. If you want to clone something into another, let me uh, move back here. I'm do deselect, patch selection. All right. um, and so for clone, that is this little stamp like item. Clone. I want to increase the size of my brush. And let's say I want to put in another dog because I love Cody so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the circle of uh, the brush over part of what I want to copy. And while I've got it there, I'm going to press down the Alt key. And you see there's a little, um, little object that appears. So while once that appears and I'm holding it down, the Alt key, I'm going to left click. That then tells me I can um, transport it somewhere. So I might want to take my mouse and move it over here and now I can Cody and his friend. Am I losing people? I yeah, um, no, unmute yourself. Everybody's still here, Jim. I'm sorry, I have a question. It's really interesting the way you are using the, the stamp tool. I uh, knew how to use it, but uh, basically I was using it to, uh, to uniformize my uh, background for uh, make it uh, just a, a plain color, basically. But I never uh, had the... Did you copy it, you said? Did you... Because I, I use the Alt key. You can use these tools for anything that works for you. Um, so if if I wanted to make uh, this is too dark, so I say I'm going to select this area here, hold down Alt, click, and then I can move it over and. Yes, this is what I do already. But the thing that I didn't, uh, I think I misunderstood the way you, you get two dogs. Um, oh, the way I did it, I want to clone my dog here. Yes. So I, I hold my brush over the dog. Okay. Making sure that my clone tool is highlighted. Yeah. Right. All right. So I select the area I want to cover. Push down uh -huh. on Alt. Yes. And then left click while I'm holding that down to set the clone stamp. Okay. Release. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
release right. both of them. Mm -hmm. and I can move this so that the move my like mouse that. to wherever right. I want. Ah, uh, so you slide to make it bigger and then you copy the rest of it. Yes, you just have to oh, play around. Same. Okay, oh yes, it's because it's bigger, so I, I was confused. That's okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Sure. Jim, just one note, I don't know if you know this or not, in some recent updates of Photoshop, right. they've actually added to the Windows panel up at the top a section specifically for the clone stamp tool, so you can actually clone mirror images. It doesn't just have to be the exact picture so if you wanted the dogs facing each other you could select it to mirror and yes. then it's great it backwards oh to wonderful mirror. um i'll have to play around and look for that yes i me too because i uh, i don't have a photoshop uh, on on me right now so i need to to turn it on i guess all right but i've will, got a few more here i'm going to go through them quickly because i want to be cognizant of everybody's time right um I'm going to auto contrast this. I'm just being lazy here. That's a little bit better, you know, but its head is still a little dark. So I'm going, I want to lighten that. I'm going to go to the uh, dodge tool here. And it's at 5%. Good. Uh, I don't want to do the highlights. I want to do probably midtones. So I'm just going to hold my mouse down and uh, right left click and run it over. It highlights that. That's nice. But what if I want, what if I hate this background? I, I just want the fish. Here's a great tool. Go up to the tool panel, object selection. When I can select something specific. And if I, I can do it by either using a lasso and just draw something around it and say, I want to work on everything here on the inside, um, which I don't want to do. Or I love this feature, which is the object select tool. Again, if you don't see it, try right clicking and uh, you can create it. So I want to see uh, by going up to the top here, select subject. Let's see uh, what it does. Can it pick out the fish? It does a pretty good job. It missed parts of it, so I can add it by going up here and it will tell me I can add to the selection. So I will um, draw with my mouse by holding down the left uh, button, let go. Anything that is highlighted here is now selected for me to be able to change. Well, that didn't do it, but uh, for the sake of time again, you can refine these things as you would like. If I want to change the exposure or anything of that fish, uh, let's just say I go to brightness here. It's highlighted, it's selected, so I can just brighten it up or darken it, you know, I can change color. I can do all these types of things with that. But I can also deal with the background. The background, everything that's not selected right now, I want to invert. So I have to select the inverse. Click on that. And you see the marching ants? Well, everything inside those marching ants is now selected for me to selectively adjust. So I can go here now, uh, I'll just go to levels, remember light and dark, and I can move the sliders brighter or darker, darker still, let's just say okay. But I don't like those blues, what do I do? Well, first of all, I, have, I wanna deselect this. I don't like all the selections, so just go up and select D. By the way, for all these tools, you can't see me, I'm pointing. But next to the tool itself will give you the shortcut command. So if I press my control or command D, uh, that will also get rid of it, same thing. I'm gonna go up to my spot uh, healing brush here. 
I'm gonna make it larger. Don't like blue, click on it, 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 et cetera. So you can send slide. So again, I'm able to create uh, things here um, that, that are nice. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Cropping. Um, and if you can hang out with me for 10 minutes, I'll be done. Uh, I appreciate your patience and persistence, even though you may know all this stuff or some of it. Cropping is one way to get rid of distracting elements. Oh, that went back to that square. Well, I want to clear this. So I go up here and clear, and then you have to click outside again. And I want to go to this, which allows me uh, width and height resolution. All right, I can move. If I grab one of these corners, I can pull it in. I can also pull in a side more if I want or out a little bit. I like the bottom the, the, where the trees actually show. Okay, I think I like that. I'm just gonna click on okay. Now I've got a beautiful uh, silhouette there. I do not like this, so what will I use? I'm gonna try that spot healing brush. Let's just see. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Not bad. And then maybe what do I want to do? Oh, you say, let's go back and let's give it a new sky. Let's pick uh, that. Great. So you see, you've got all of these different tools that you can play with. Um, I don't need to do that. Oh, so, you know, do unconventional crops. If you see a beautiful panoramic landscape, you know, but you've got way too much sky, which is all the same, you know, consider cropping it to get into what you want. You remember I told you about that black and white um, conversion. So adjustments, black and white. Again, I could turn this into a nice black and white. And by moving the red slider, create something more dramatic, yellow. You know, play around with these types of things. I don't think there's any green, but you never know. Cyan, very subtle in the awnings and the windows. Blue, maybe more. Darkens those window, upper windows right up. So again, you, you can combine all of these tools. Uh, okay, let's just say, okay. This is one of the wildest features uh, of Lightroom. So I said I could crop it. Well, if you look at the fish here, I actually, when I took the image, I chopped off the top of its uh, dorsal fin. Can I fix it? I don't know, but I'm going to try. I'm going to add some real estate. The way I do that is I go to crop, and instead of you know make cropping, I'm pulling down to make it smaller. I'm actually going to expand this a bit. And up above here, you'll see there is for the crop tool, you'll see there is this uh, function content aware. I want to click on content aware. And what that can help the computer uh, Photoshop do is think about, if I was to keep going, what might it look like? I'm going to click on the OK. Oh my gosh, that is magic. That, I couldn't even make it that much better. So this content aware is utterly mind blowing. Um, let me show you what I could do here. Uh, this is the original image, right? So that I took of that can of flower. Well, what about if I wanted to turn this from a portrait or a vertical shot into a horizontal shot? OK, 
Okay, I pull out, I increase my real estate here. I make sure content aware is checked and I'm going to click plus. Whoa, not bad, not bad at all. Is it ethical? You be the judge, all right? <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to show you this one because we've seen enough already. I know you want to know how did I get to be so young and dashing? Well, it's all Photoshop, of course. <laughs> so for this, you have to have the Photoshop um, the, uh, on the cloud. You have to have the subscription, I believe, because this is uh, a feature that is done uh, over the cloud. If you get a facial picture there, uh, you go up to the filters. Remember filters add things on. And you'll see something that says neural filters. Click on that. It's going to bring up a panel here. And uh, there are different things that could do. I could smooth out my skin. <laughs> uh, I could do that if I wanted to. You know, there's a variety of things that you can remove JPEG artifacts, those pixely looking things, all sorts of things here. But I'm gonna go right now just to the smart portrait and I'm gonna slide the button over to turn it on. Okay, so um, you want me to look younger? So do I. Facial age. I'm gonna click here and uh, I'm going to make myself younger, I hope. I slide it over, it takes a while. This is very, um, processor intensive. So you have to be patient, you know, go feed your dog or something. Uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It should. There, do you see that? It made me uh, darker hair, slightly uh, better looking hair. <laughs> uh, and if I wanted to go old, I take that slider, I put it all the way over here. And let's see, what is it gonna do to me? Well, you can see it needs some fixing up around the hairline here, but, oh boy. And what about if I wanted to be really happy? Ooh. I don't like happy. <laughs> I'd rather be grumpy, I guess, or something. <laughs> um, mm, mm. What if I'm angry? So again, you, you get the idea. These are just all little uh, tricks and tools. I can actually change the thickness of my hair. I can turn my gaze to the right if I want. Ugh, I look like a wanted poster. So. Um, there are many, many, many tools. I, I'm, I'm going to be done. I'm going to go back to the regular screen here. Um, uh, let me go back to this uh, new share. Where's our, uh, I'm just, I don't know how to get out. I'm going to stop my share. So, um, so I showed you a lot of tools. And again, you know, there are so many, tools available through Photoshop. Lightroom does a great job with global changes. In other words, if you want to change the overall color, the overall sharpness, the overall contrast, you just can't beat it. And you can do some selective areas as well. Um, but for some of these finer tools, Photoshop is really your uh, Cadillac. There are also things called plugins which uh, you can add into Photoshop um, that allow you to do additional uh, specialized techniques that are mind blowing. 